Hello, I'm Kim Miller from Woman at the Well Ministries, and I'm so excited that you've decided to spend the next few moments with me to look into God's Word and hear what He has to say to us as we start our day or finish our day or whatever time of day you may be listening to this. Our scripture today comes out of the Angel Graham Self-Inspection, and it comes from the book Haggai, the first chapter and the fifth verse which reads, Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. My mom used to have a saying, and it went like this. You may be the only Bible that some people ever read. Make sure you get it right and display it fully. And as I grew up, it seemed like an odd saying, and it seemed like an odd thing that she said all the time to me. But as I became older and older, I began to look at the scriptures and see more things around me. I realized what she meant. She meant that as a child of the Most High God, I had an obligation for others to see him and me. I also knew what she really meant was, as I claim to be a child of the Most High God, people are looking at my life as my interpretation of who God is. Because however I demonstrate him must be who I think he is. And so she wanted to make sure that as I grew more in the Lord and as I grew up, that I was living a life that reflected what the scripture said, that showed that I was a changed person, not because of who I was, but because of who lived in me. I should be very different than someone who does not house the Holy Spirit. And she wanted to make sure that I understood that my ways made a difference in other people's lives. And so as I began to look at this angelogram entitled Self-Inspection, and I see the verse that says, Consider your ways, I can't help but know that other people are considering my ways as well. And I, I wonder, on a day-to-day -day basis, step by step, is my life leading people to Christ or is my life drawing them away? As a child of the Most High God, it needs to lead them to the Master. Good morning. Flash those pearly whites and let the whole world know the joy you feel inside. You have a joy and peace inside that is beyond most people's wildest imaginations. Make the most of this day and share that peace with everyone you meet. What peace am I talking about? The peace of the Holy Spirit. What joy am I talking about? The joy of the Holy Spirit alive and living within me. Our scripture in Haggai chapter 1 verse 5. Now therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. This verse is small but packed with meaning. It is so important that it is repeated in the seventh verse of Haggai, nearly verbatim. He says in the same chapter, in verse 7, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Our scripture began with, Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Both verses are telling us to consider our ways. So important that he wrote it twice in the very same chapter. The Lord is saying that you need to consider the ways in which you conduct your life. You need to examine your thoughts, your motives, and your actions. The Lord is telling you that you need to keep a close eye on yourself. He says you should consider your ways. The Bible continually tells you to be godly and holy. This verse tells you that you need to keep your walk in check. You need to constantly examine it checking for deterioration or sin. You know, most Christians who fall astray, they don't just step off the cliff. They take multiple steps toward the cliff. There's a thing they teach in leadership classes about you can throw a frog into, into boiling water and he'll immediately jump out. That makes sense, right? But if you put the frog in the same pan with regular water and you keep that frog in that pan and every 10 or 15 minutes you raise the temperature of that pan, 
the frog will stay in that pan, even when it starts to boil, which kills him. Because he loses sight of the danger of the boiling water because he took for granted and tolerated the increments of very small changes. Changes that were not going in the direction he needed to go in. And you say, well, Kim, I'm not a fraud, but well, so many of us live that way. You see, sin is subtle sometimes. And I don't care who you are. You can get your eyes just slightly off of Christ. And you begin to tolerate small things. And then as those small increments begin to add up, you find yourself doing things that you never thought you would ever do. I've seen this in people in my life. People that I would have laid my life down and said would never have done some things that I've seen them do. But they didn't just jump off the cliff. There were subtle moves they made they got them to the edge of the cliff. And when they got to the edge of the cliff, they didn't see it as a cliff. It was just one more little step. So this scripture tells us to consider our ways. And it's a warning for us. It's a warning to tell us every day we need to give an account of ourselves to the Lord. We need to go over our acts and our events of the day and allow him to cleanse us and to tell us where we've stepped out of the way and to enlighten to us those things that we shouldn't have done. We need to come to him with a heart that is wanting to be cleansed. You know, the hymn said, cleanse me, O Lord. That's what we need to come to him with because we don't want small steps to result in a over the cliff fall. It's hard to regain your reputation. It's hard to regain that witness. We want to be the most we can be for the Lord. And I promise you, there's some uncomfortable feeling even in the small increments. Until you get acclimated, it feels uncomfortable. And we don't need to feel uncomfortable in our lives. We need to be very comfortable. We need to be joyous in the Lord. We need to be vibrant. We need to be confident because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And as we begin to acclimate our lives to the little sins around us, what we're doing is we're shutting down the voice of the Holy Spirit within us. And we begin to hear the things of the world, and they began to sound a little better as opposed to sometimes the chastening of the Lord through the Holy Spirit. You see, it's important that we consider our ways. No one ever just destroys their own life. You see that father out there who's drinking is setting an example for his children. That mother who is having an affair, is taking time away from their family, and she's stealing trust within that family home. That person who is doing anything wrong, perhaps stealing, perhaps lying, perhaps cheating, all the things that we do that we just sort of do one little thing, and we call them white lies. But let me tell you what, there is no such thing as a white lie. It's either truth or it isn't. And I want to tell you something else that most of us don't want to believe. Sin is sin. That little thing you call a white lie is the same as adultery. The difference is the ramifications of the sin. How many people am I going to pull under with me with what I do? Consider your ways because every step you take is attached to somebody else's footsteps. And I promise you, you won't be the only one that is hurt by the sin that you have allowed yourself to acclimate to and you just get in deeper and deeper and deeper. But today, right now at this moment, you can claim 1 John 1, 9. This says if we confess our sins, 
He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the Bible says, if you draw near unto God, he'll draw near unto you. And you can confess your sins unto the Savior and he will forgive you and he will pick you up out of the miry clay and he'll wash you white as snow and he will set you on the path that leads to righteousness. And he will lead you and he will direct you. And all you'll have to do is hear his voice. And every day come to him and ask him to examine your life and tell you what to get rid of and what to put in. Consider your ways each and every day. It's not just your life that depends on it. It's those that are around you. Our angel to angel chat. Each day you are faced with many decisions and have lots of options from which to choose. You need to look at yourself closely to determine what you want now and in the future. You need to set your course to prepare yourself for the future you want. Do not leave out your spiritual life when making these decisions. As you look at yourself and what you want out of life, be sure to examine your spiritual life and see to it that it is in order with God's ways. Consider your actions and make very sure they are portraying your inner self. Make plans for your spiritual growth so that you are prepared for the future and so your eternity is as you wish. Remember God loves you. You are loved. Our key thought, don't let your actions betray your heart.